Welcome back, everyone, to the Cyber Gamer Pro League Finals. I am, of course, Max Atlas Anderson, and I'm joined this time by Reese Menace Grant. How you doing, man? No one knows my real name. Don't tell them my real name. <laughs> they know now. No. It's 52. <laughs> Menace. Uh, how you going, Atlas? Uh, that last match, I see you're still quite hyped from it, and you were only watching. I was casting that thing, and that was amazing. So No, no, we were watching two phenomenal games, Menace. That was the upset of Curse against Immunity. Little Wraith of Old taking down the Titans again in a really, really high-class match as well. And this is getting them into the qualification position. But as well, at the same time, and this is exactly what we're watching, is your soul shall chuffer knocking Dignitas completely out of the winter round of eight completely with a dominating 25-minute victory. Denian playing that Ezreal going 9-0 and 6. Absolutely amazing. And already we have the bands coming through. It's Lucian and Kassim and already banned out by Avantgarde Ascension. And of course, Lulu and Kazix. And I didn't even like introduce the game yet because I'm so excited. But this is, good, of course, going to be Avantgarde Ascension taking on your soul shell chuffer here in the lower bracket. And my goodness, the winner of this game will go up against Team Immunity for a spot in that grand final against Curse. And we'll see whether it's an Immunity Curse final because that is going to be so hyped. I would surely hope it's going to be a three match of those guys. That's going to be a best of three. So Curse are going to have to step up for that one. They've played Immunity before. They've beaten Immunity before under a different banner. They have now beaten them again. If they can beat them in this final today, I think Benji said it on Twitter. It's going to be the first time in six months that Immunity will actually lose a tournament. And uh, actually, I don't think they've lost a tournament in that long. Uh, six months, maybe even more. It's been six months since they've lost a game in a tournament, I would say. Uh, but it's really, well, at least a bracket anyway. So Immunity, if they get to play Curse in the end here, it'll be a three best of three. And uh, Curse are going to have to step up the plate, that's for sure. But this game between a Vineguard Ascension and your Soul Shell Chopper is going to be amazing again. Like I said last game, YSSC played um, an immaculate game. Danny and going beast mode. Absolutely beast mode. We do have the final bands coming through. Elise and Ziggs being taken away as well. Carbon playing a fantastic Elise earlier on. They want to get rid of that one. And Temp name. His Ziggs was instrumental in their last victory, but that does leave the Jacks open, and Impaired's going to be able to pick that one up. Of course, subbing in for Minky Whale, and then also subbing in again for Rusty, who was playing earlier. Impaired, I think, managed to pull himself out of bed and is now onto the rift for Avant-Garde Ascension into that top lane. Jack Attack and Zai taking a little bit of time to pick their their choices here on the side of your Soul Shell Chuffer, just trying to work that out. Of course, Jack Attack playing a fantastic Renekton is going to hover over that one, and it's going to be Caitlyn, perhaps, being picked up here for Denian. So, a, uh, one, you know, Denian's one of those guys that play everything. I mean, he, we see him. He's oh, pretty yeah. Known. He's been playing for so long, too. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty known for his Ash, though. Really likes to play that one. And, uh, you know, really start up team fights with the Arrow, as uh, we've seen him do before. But also, a yeah, really good uh, Caitlyn player as well. We'll have to see if he actually locks that one in. But Kazakh's being banned out is uh, it's kind of sad for me. I really love seeing Kazakh's being played. Yeah, and especially when Carbon is such a fantastic Kazix player. I think Zahi definitely didn't want to have that one in the roster um, as an option because I haven't seen Zahi picking that one up very often. Of course, last game played a fantastic Wukong that we haven't seen just recently. As soon as that Feral Flare came in, we've been seeing the likes of Nocturne sort of really taking him over. But Zahi showing that he's still definitely current. We do have a Thresh being hovered over here. Gymnast fantastic on that champion and carbon looking for his next pickup but if it is the th the thresh and the jacks that's two really powerful picks already and jack attack up against this jacks in the top lane that's going to be a massive amount of time that they have to wait and as soon as jacks starts overcoming jack attack in this top lane it's going to be so hard for um, chuffer to stay in this one of course with this trundle being locked in as well on the side of carbon it's going to be very interesting to see whether they put Jax in the jungle or Trundle. Mm, that will be uh, an interesting thing to see. But also, while we're uh, while we're talking about some of the general stuff, Dignitas have actually failed to qualify for the round of eight, so it's unfortunate for them. Yeah. Uh, that'll have to wait till. Uh, well, that is it for. I don't know if there's any other chances to get in for the uh, wild card this year. So they are completely out at the moment. This is this is it. Last chances to get through to get into those finals, but. Uh, yeah, so yeah. let's see. Let's uh, So some of the bands that have come out, I've only got a few up on my screen at the moment. Yeah, but, well, the picks are coming through, and we've got Chuffer just... They, they're they waiting a long time. Tempname and Danian still making their decisions with three seconds to go. Of course, it's going to be the Morgana being looked at. Flying Jew played a fantastic Morgana just earlier. And Wukong 
is going to be locked in again here for Zahi. So that's three members of their last team comp that they actually used. The only change up here so far being Caitlyn instead of that Ezreal there in the bottom lane. And they made this team comp work really well. We'll see what they can do to replace Ziggs in the mid, mid lane, which is what they played last time. We'll see whether they can really keep up the aggression that they showed in the last game that they um, faced up against Dignitas because they turned it on from the word go, finishing a game off, killing the Nexus. It wasn't a surrender. They destroyed the Nexus at 25 minutes in. So we'll see what they can do. It's Choo Choo's looking at his Yasuo because it didn't actually get banned out. Chuffer deciding not to get that one in there. They have picked away the Wukong, so a little bit of that uh, synergy has been lost. And they do have the Flay. Kadra going to be insta-locking the vein though. The late game coming out from Avant-Garde Ascension is unbelievable at the moment. Yeah, they have plenty of damage for that late game. And uh, with Card uh, sorry, Gymnast there be playing that Thresh uh, for the bottom lane, I think it's going to carry through the vein. It's going to be a Protect the Vein comp. Jax has a lot of potential there. So that'll be the Jax jungle, by the way. Trundle in the top lane. Um, Wukong, I really like that pick though. Zay is uh, one of those one of those guys that loves to play the Wukong. We've seen him play it a lot, and we'll have to see how that one turns out for him playing against the Jacks. We've got Morgana there locked in down the bottom lane for Flying Jew. Lots of potential there for um, Caitlyn to really get into the front of the fight, even though she's got that large range. I mean, that's a very safe lane for her, uh, for Denian to be playing, and he he does like to play pretty passive earlier on. Um, especially against the Thresh, who's going to be quite a pain in the butt. Uh, but for Avant Guard, I'm really liking their team composition. You talked about it before. The uh, like Oh, it's the Swain. Oh, the little dear. cutie Cheeseroni. This is incredible. The, the Chuffer Swain is what everyone always wants to see because this team is what really brought that to the forefront. Played some incredible wombo combo combinations in order to bring that one into the forefront. And playing Swain against um, Choo Choo's here on this Yasuo, we'll see how that, that goes because I've never seen that particular matchup in the mid lane ever just because Swain not often played and Yasuo hasn't really been... I think brought out to his full potential as of yet. People haven't quite realized the nuances behind playing him. So we'll see what um, Choo Choo's can do. I really like it uh, 1v1 against Yasuo as well. Like there's no real um, potential there for Yasuo to burst down Sw uh, Swain because as soon as he gets within that range, he can just start healing back up with all the sustain that he has. So a really nice pick from uh, Little Kuchi Zeroni from, uh, from YSSC there for the mid lane Swift um, playing against the Yasuo. And, uh, but there's just so much assassination potential there for Avant Guard Ascension as well. Not sure how it's going to pan out. Yeah, not to mention their incredible amounts of team fight to stain damage as well. Of course, Vayne, every time that Silver Bolt procs every third attack, it's going to be a massive burst of damage. Jax as well with all of his damage is going to be a Jax jungle, as we were talking about before, and Impaired going up against Jack Attack here in the top lane. And wanting to bring out that Trundle, of course, not going to be winning early on in that matchup. Jack Attack taking that Ignite as well, just to try and get as much lane dominance as he possibly can. Of course, now Heal has been changed back as well, so not as powerful against the Ignite. Does give you that movement speed buff as well, but does not remove the Grievous Wounds. So Ignite still going to be powerful against that Heal if it does go onto the likes of Kadrid. And he's not going to be able to help out his teammates with that one quite as well. But I think it's all about YSSC really trying to capitalize on this team comp in the early game. Because Trundle, not so strong early. Jax, not that strong early. Yasuo is okay, but he's going to really benefit after he gets those two main items to give him that 100% crit. Of course, the Infinity Edge and the Static Shiv. That's going to be when he really hits his power spike. A lot of Yasuo is also liking to build the Blade of the Ruin King before that as well. So once he gets gets that trifecta of items, that's when he's going to be a monster. And of course, Vayne's laning phase, not all that powerful. So Denian and Flying Jew really wanted to put the pressure down early on in this lane. And having that Black Shield is going to be absolutely fantastic because it nullifies a lot of the CC coming out from Thresh. And of course, the um, Condemn coming through from Kadrid as well, which is really, really important. Not going to be able to get stunned up against those walls. That Condemn is monstrous when a vein really wants to get on top of you and put down that damage. So I think that YSSC, they've got a timer on them, but I think that their team comp is fantastic early on and they really have to capitalize on that. I think that that Devant Guard essentially going to have a lot of trouble dealing with Renekton, someone who benefits a lot from armor and with an all AD lineup here for... Uh, all physical damage lineup for Avant Guard Ascension. Renekton is going to have a lot of fun 
with all the items that synergize really well. We've got, uh, you know, the Randuin's Omen in there, which will really make him a beast. I, it's just really hard for a Vine Guard Ascension to burst down that Renekton, who's going to be right up in the grill of, uh, of, of Vayne. It does, it does very, very much depend on Impaired's ability to use Subjugate at the right times, though, because, of course, that is going to take a percentage of Jack Attack's defensive stats, put them onto himself. So if Jack Attack does go the way of really trying to stack out that armor, of course, that makes Impaired Subjugate even more powerful. Not to mention the fact that Kadra does have true damage on those Silver Bolts. It's going to mean there is a little bit of a way around it. Of course, Jack Attack still does have to build it. He definitely does. Zahi probably wants to build a Randuin's Omen as well, possibly trying to get a lot more of that armor in there because they've got a lot of ways around the armor. But of course, that's the main source of damage that's coming out. Not to mention the fact that Jax actually has a fair bit of magic damage in his kit as well. So we'll see what comes out and what they manage to do. But in the early game especially, yes, they really, really need to try and aim for building up that armor because if they can get into a team fight around Dragon around 10 minutes and really come out ahead on the side of YSSC, they're going to put themselves in a great position in order to try and take down this game. The only thing is that I'm worried about is that Denian's now on Caitlyn, more of a late game champion, wanting to sit in the back and just shoot people from range. Their laning phase is going to be fantastic. Of course, Vayne, no presence at all, 1 through 6. She's a little bit pathetic. Once she does get her Blade of the Ruined King, she'll be able to duel a lot of people. Her split push potential is going to be fantastic. But up until that point, I mean, we've got... Um, dark Bindings and Piltover Peacemaker combinations landing on people getting snared up in that bottom lane. It's going to be really, really hard. And, man, I just think things are really dependent on how this game starts out. So, look to have a lot of early game power coming through from YSSC. And if they don't, heaven help them in the late game, basically. I think that, in all, looking at both teams here, Atlas, I think both, uh, I think the YSSC have come out on top. They've got themselves a better team composition. Uh, I'm really, I'm really not a big fan of the all AD lineup that Avantgarde have as we do head into. Yeah, the game it's true. Now. It's, just, it's, it's going to be hard for them to overcome. Um, a, a top lane here. There's a bit more mobility with the the teleport being picked up by Trundle, but. Uh, you know, Renekton's going to be able to have that kill potential level three with the Ignite. I don't think that uh, Trundle's going to have much of a fun time in the top lane there. Impaired's going to have to play his best. Uh, Jax has a lot of uh, a lot of good ganky potential, but I think the Wukong is a little bit better, especially team fight wise. There's a lot of AOE, and like I said, that Randall's Omen is going to be a pretty big essential part to this team. Yeah, uh, a lot of attack speed reliance. You're really, really correct on that one. Yeah, it's 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 going to be the first item for sure that Renekton picked up. And it's also synergized well with Wukong Ultimate as well as the slows from Swain. There's just a lot of, uh, it's a lot of trouble for Avant Guard. Morgana Ulti as well in there. You think about all the potential here for team fights. It's just why SSC have come out on top. They get a five v five team fight. There's still no way Avant Guard are going to win. Yeah, the thing about um, why SSC that I'm a little bit worried about. Their team comp really wants to just group up. They want the Cyclone going. They want the Ravenous Flock getting as much damage down as possible. They want to have those Soul Shackles really attaching to every member on the side of Avant Garde. And that really opens them up to a phenomenal last breath coming through from Choo Choo's. If he manages to get the knock up on multiple targets when they're doing the thing that their team comp really wants to do, it could be really, really bad. There's, um, we are onto the Rift though. We, of course, have Avant Garde Ascension here. In our blue side, and on our red team, we've got your Soul Shell Truffer in this best of one matchup at the very pointy end here of the lower bracket. This is do or die now for these teams, and Menace, I'm so incredibly excited. Yeah, it's been a pretty hype day here, especially with the last game coming through the pause and out as usual. But we can talk all day about these teams. Let's have a look about uh, what they're deciding to do for the level one. It seems that Avant Guard are grouping up for the mid lane. Maybe you see an invade coming out for them. I, I mean, yeah, potentially. I, I didn't get to mention much, but I like the vein pick. It's just, it, it seems to me a little bit out of place. I know there's a lot of uh, late game potential there for them, especially with with Choo Choo's there on the Yasuo. But uh, Yasuo is also a bad pick, in my opinion. I mean, Ziggs was still on the board. There's plenty of good mid No, nah, Ziggs was banned. Ziggs, oh, was, Ziggs banned. was banned. I apologize. So, I mean, there's. But like, Ariana was there. Ariana like, was there. That would have been fantastic. I, I, yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of options there for them. Uh, Choo Choo's opting out for the SO. I, I'm going to say it all day. I don't like all, all AD compositions. It's too easily countered with the items. Yeah, the only issue that I, I'm worried about on the side of um, YSSC is that Yasuo gets banned against Choo Choo's every single game. True. 
everyone that I've seen, it's been banned out. I haven't had a chance to see Choo Choo's Yasuo for months. So I guess we could potentially find out now exactly why that could happen. This uh, pause, unfortunately, coming through for quite some time. But you're exactly right. We can talk about this until the, t the cows come home. Because, and as you were saying, I think the vein pick, perfectly honest, according to me, is a lot to, to do with the fact that Piglet was playing it in the All Stars and to great effect in matchups that he possibly shouldn't have been winning. So I think everyone around the world has said, yep, Vayne's good again. Don't worry about it. SKT1 played it. It's fine. We're going to be okay. Play Vayne. <laughs> There it is, the League of Legends guide, according to Max. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever SKT1 does, uh, just Atlas. play it. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, so Invade does come out from Avant Guard. Split up here, YSSC, throwing a ward down. Both wards actually going around this red buff. And you can see that uh, Avant Guard trying to do an invade on the red buff. The uh, Dark Binding comes out, lands straight onto Carbon. And uh, they're able to walk out of the jungle. No fights in mid lane. Lots of warding, though. Um, three wards being used for the jungle around YSSC. Zay, they're going to know exactly where he's at. Yeah, they really are. And of course, having these trinket wards available so much earlier on is fantastic here for getting that early vision, especially defensively. Definitely avant-garde going to be able to see exactly where YSSC is starting. And although, you know, they're over at their red buff, they could definitely uh, infer that that's where they're going to be because they can see her everywhere else. A couple of Trinket Wards still available, but we'll see what they decide to do. And as we can see, we're going to have a potential late invade here coming from a very odd direction, but they're going to wander straight through a ward if they do go for this one. They do walk through the brush here. Will they walk over the ward? So there's no vision from... Uh... The, the ward actually died really, really early on. Yeah, they must have chucked it down super quick. And you can see here, Avanka coming out. That gets a, just getting locked up by a Dark Binding. They really want to snowball this game to their advantage already. Carbon starting off the blue buff. Built over Peacemaker coming out. And uh, YSSC want to fight this one. Will Zay be able to just smite over the wall? The fail smite! No! It's not going to be enough. Uh, the blue buff does go over to Jax. Yeah, a bit unfortunate, Zay. Not quite able to manage that one in Peg. Going to teleport up to the top lane and meet Jack Attack up there and join the Slugfest. And of course, here we do have 2v2 and 1v1 matchups here across the board. So this is definitely not going to go in the favor of Avant Garde because Denian and Flying Jew just have a massive range advantage. Oh, Temname oh. actually taking a lot of damage. Of course, level 2 being hit too early here for Choo Choo's and Temname just not quite able to really capitalize on Swain's incredibly powerful level 1 just with the Torment auto attack combination just doing a lot of damage hasn't really been oh weaving that dark binding through the death sentence does land as well but Kadra taking a lot of damage we'll see whether anything can happen flying Jew going incredibly deep for this one trying to get the last auto attack off dark binding does land on a gymnast but they do have to disengage lots of damage going down on both sides yeah nice little uh, dark binding there it was a very even trade though like you said I believe the exhaust was used onto Danny and to try and slow him down a bit there's a pause mid dark Ooh. binding <laughs> I don't think it's going to land. Cardra will be able to walk away from that. Surely he's seen that. He, well, I think he's definitely seen it now. And I think he's, he's probably, probably just going to be spam, just clicking the wrong button. Oh my god, Cheese is lagging <laughs> again. So it's going to be little cute Cheese Aroni in the mid in the mid lane, playing on temp name five oh seven. Little lagaroni. Yeah, little cutie lagaroni. <laughs> and it's Denny and also saying, "Can you dodge it?" To Cardra. <laughs> for this particular Dark Binding. So, pretty easily telegraphed one, that one. They're going to be able to move out of that one. But as it stands, we do have 4.1k gold on both sides. No leads have been taken early on. Cardred, of course, getting pushed down very, very low, but this is what we're expecting here. And 10 to 15 CS in the mid lane. So, Choo Choo's already with an advantage and pressing up really far onto Little Cutie she's running. And this is the really interesting thing is Little, Cut Little Cutie's Swain is really, really aggressive. At all stages of the game, he plays that Swain as if he's the most powerful champion on the map. But right now, he's taking a lot, a lot of harass in the middle lane. Well, he does have those biscuits of rejuvenation there to uh, heal himself back up. Bring into the support masteries there, um, the support tree for those. And uh, maybe we will resume very quickly. I'm not sure I don't have the chat up at the moment, but... Uh, I might actually take a quick break while we wait for the pause. Oh, no. I knew it would happen. Yeah, knew that's that would how happen. it happens. I just said it so that it would happen. Just, uh... All right, so up in this top lane here, we've got a Doran's Blade versus the Doran's Shield. 
Very defensive start from Trundle. Doesn't want to fight that Renekton. And he needs that survivability early on. Once that level 3 comes out, and you can see already Jack Attack using it to his advantage. He's pushed this lane up super hard. Has got that Ignite available, and Impaired is uh, having a lot of trouble. Yeah, Impaired definitely is. And of course, having to teleport up there as well misses out on the first couple of creeps. So the level advantage always going to be in the... Uh going the way of Jack attack, and it's going to make things very, very difficult in this top lane, because if you give Necton any sort of an edge, especially in a losing matchup here for um, Trundle, it's going to make things really, really difficult. We'll see whether he can play back, do a bit of a cool mog, and just play for that late game, because he's going to definitely need to. And if he gives up kills here to Jack attack, whoa, and things are getting very, very dangerous up there. As we're talking about it, things could get really, really rough. Yeah, so Impaired taking a few hits there. He walked out really far from this from his turret. I thought maybe he was going to continue walk. I'm not sure what happened. But Jack Attack actually tanking a turret hit did bugger all damage, even though he has got uh, <laughs> uh, Tora's Blade there. He, uh, yeah, so back in this mid lane, you can see that uh, the Choo Choo's has a bit of an advantage early on for a while. And look at that wind wall just instantly getting rid of uh, of the Decrepify there from, from Swain. It's just such a good counter. Yeah, it's brilliant. And of course, getting rid of those. Uh, oh, there's a Decrepify coming out again, but Temp Name getting gone on really, really hard. There's the Never Move, just defensively. Not anything going to come from that one either. A nice shield coming through from Choo Choo's as well. Goes in, the Ignite goes down. There's another E. We'll see whether it's enough damage. That oh, Zay! Flashing over the wall in the bottom lane as well. We've got the Lantern Gang coming through. Denny and having to flash out of the way. And use, of course, that net as well. Flying Jew does have that black shield, but in the meantime, the middle lane. Nothing ended up coming in action all across the map already. And even this wet noodle fight up the oh, top is getting exciting. Kadra's going down. He flashes away, actually. In the mid lane, you can see his A uh, using his uh, invis to get away from Choo Choo's. The tornado comes through. He flashes in. He's going to die, though. First blood goes over to Yasuo. Instantly traded back as well. Those have been destroyed. But definitely getting first blood makes it worth it here for Choo Choo's. He also has his lane pushing up as well, so not going to miss out on too many creeps on his turret. So things working out really, really well. Does pick up a zeal straight away compared to the Amp Tome and extra Doran's Ring coming through from Little Cutie Cheese. And uh, 32 CS, 226 as well, 8 CS advantage on the side of Yasuo. Brilliant work. And in the bottom lane, all that action coming through at the same time. That being said, at the end of the day, it is going to be a 200 gold lead for your Soul Shell Chuffer. So theoretically still doing okay, but having this Yasuo getting moving early on is really, really dangerous. Lucky we have two play-by-play -play casters to cover all this. It's action, so man. true, Menace. Thank <laughs> you very much for picking that one up for me. <laughs> but bottom lane, looks like uh, we've got a lane swap coming out here. Yeah, they're going to get the heck out of that lane. They know that that Caitlyn range a little bit too difficult. Oh, Jack and uh, Jack Attack needing to be kept down, so swapping that one out a little bit late, you would have thought that they'd try and go for that lane swap as soon as possible, but we do have Jack Attack, of course, backing out straight away, and oh, uh, Impaired Choo does have now? the teleport as well, so they can get around this map really quickly. So Choo Choo's and Carbon chilling out around the red buff at the moment, I don't think they realize it's uh, maybe... Is this going to be like the belated four-man push? Oh, we could see this is big trouble for Morgana in, in here. We see Carbon coming around. They're going to get spotted by the ward. They see him straight away. Flying Drew tries to escape. Has got the uh, the spell shield caliber nets away. This could be a uh, turret, though, for a Vineguard Ascension. It is at full health. Denian actually getting bursted down incredibly low. There's the Dark Binding, but it's not going to be enough. Denian, one last shot. Kadra picks up that kill. Happily tanks out the, the, the turret as well. But here comes little cutie cheese. The never move is there. There's a Decrepify. He is going to be able to pick up that kill. That's one. Is there going to be any more coming through? It has been already. Morgana falling down. Zahi pops that decoy, tries to get up. But Carbon's going to be the next one to fall down. Zahi's so low. Choo Choo's now is trying to get out, but it has the creeps there. Tempname does get knocked up. Is it going to be enough? Meanwhile, when Noodle fight in the bottom lane, we don't want to be looking at that. Choo Choo's comes out at the top, <laughs> the vibes, and then we can go back to the bottom lane, watch these guys beating on each other. Oh, well, an interesting fight for sure. That <laughs> Able to use the knock-up there, actually, Choo Choo's at the last second to survive. And one more auto-attack would have been enough from Little Cutie Cheese Roni to kill him. But uh, you can see here in the top lane, Swain just pushing up those minions. It is four to three, though. In favor of Avant Guard Ascension, a huge team fight up in that top lane, just dancing around the brushes. And uh, I thought for sure the Yasuo was going to go down, but it's not enough. 
three for one on that Yasuo early on. Really bad. What is going on with these lanes? They're all over the place. Yeah, they are absolutely everywhere right now. We've got Kaelin wanting to push down this middle lane before getting any of the outer turrets, which is very interesting. Normally, you'd wait until that bottom turret goes down, then rotate into the mid lane and try and get that one out as well. But we do have our top lane is now in the bottom lane. Jack Attack with a nice rotation down there, trying to keep this 1v1 matchup that he's definitely winning out on. And uh, we've got Thresh now is the top laner, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Vayne now rotating out, trying to get to that one as well. And She's we've got the bottom jungle, lane here. So. <laughs> jungle Vayne. Thresh top, what the heck is going on, Menace? I don't even know where I am, but we do have a 3 1 and 1 Yasuo, and this is the danger, as we can see. Now going on a little cutie cheese again, and there's the wind wall doing nice work getting rid of that ravenous flock. Those birds are not going to be able to get through the wind. Of course, it's a little bit like your, your windows at home, Menace. You know, when you hear that funk, you know that the birds smacked straight into the window. It's what it feels like here in the mid lane. But you can see the trades between the two actually uh, going in favor of Swain. But you see a dragon being started here by a Vant guard. But a Chuchu is doing this one stealthily. I don't even think YSC know what's going on here. Yeah, they don't have any idea. This pink ward being really, really well used. And look at that wind wall as well, stopping all of the damage for a time as well. So Carbon going to be able to pick that one up and extending the lead here for Avant-Garde Ascension. And we were talking about this before. This is incredibly dangerous. The late game coming through from Avant-Garde Ascension is phenomenal. But when you've got a Renekton on your team, when you've got things like Swain that aren't necessarily that fantastic towards the later ends of the game, never move, not going to quite land there. And things are going to get very, very difficult. Of course, Renekton being the only real early game massive threat. But, oh, the Death Sentence landing on the Flying Jew. The box not quite going to hit. Flying Jew going to be able to get out of that one, but very, very low on health, and we'll see whether Denian can still survive in this top lane. Choo Choo's taking a lot of damage, does put the wind wall down. The yep, Ignite on yep. it is as well. It's interesting, because that wall yeah, is just... definitely not going to get a kill. Yeah, dodges the nether move there, and comes the ultimate oh, from the last uh, breath. Choo Choo's, is he going to fall very quickly? The flash from Tempna comes out, he gets stunned on the turret, though. Will he be able to return the favor? Look at all the regen here coming Ravenous out. Carbon. so strong. It's so strong. So he comes in and just assassinates him. Little cutie cheese around his Swain. Still is godlike. 2-0-2 two, and two now, and that fight just completely outplaying Choo Choo's. Without Ignite as well, this has to be mentioned. Ignite was used in that exchange for Choo Choo's, but it's only just come up that second here for Little Cutie Cheese. Dominus has been popped in that bottom lane. There's the pillar as well. Going to take one auto attack, but it's still going to be fine. And this, yeah. Uh, let's just stop talking about this bottom lane, because my goodness. Oh, oh there's the Ignite, as soon as you do. the Flash! As soon as you do, it's all the action. Jack attack as well as Impaired here. Both of them solo. Impaired was really just a couple of minions away from dying there. But a nice trade. Both of them actually, I think, used their flash. Yeah, they did both use flash and then engage. Uh, ignite as well onto Impaired. But look at here. In the mid lane, Swain is now in full control. And uh, Yasuo has got no hope. Now that 2-0-2, two, two, he's got himself the uh, the Seeker's Arm Guard as well as the, the Blasting one. So well on his way to getting his Zonya's Hourglass, which synergizes again so well with all that uh, physical damage coming out from Avant Guard. Yeah, it really is. And this is exactly um, Little Cutie Cheese's build that he builds every single time on this way. And it's Rod of Ages into that Zonya's Hourglass. Of course, he's adapted it this time to get the, a little bit of the early game armor. Trying to scale that one up, and of course you can increase that by about 15. The never move does land, and he does run through the wind wall, of course. Very nice, Ian. We've got Carbon coming through as well, but Choo Choo's, look at how much damage he takes. There's the last breath. The Ignite coming down to Choo Choo's. Are they going to be out of oh. trade? Look at Temp name. He's just all that health coming back. There is another ability. Never move comes down. Is he going to survive? Oh. Kardra in the top lane, meanwhile, oh. gets destroyed. Little Cootie Cheese with the double kill. 1v2, and they get another kill on the top lane. 4-8 to eight now on the side of YSSC. What is going on, Menace? Wow, little cute of cheese Aroni playing it absolutely amazing in the mid lane. Picking up a 2 for 1 and <laughs> 2 for nothing against the 2v1 there. And uh, up at the top lane, they're able to grab a kill onto Vayne. They're going to get the turret as well. Ah, oh, man, YSSC are going to be really happy with that one. Yes, it feels like they're streaking ahead. Only a 1,000 gold lead, but they've just got the top tower as well. That's two turrets to nothing. And when this is the side of um, Caitlyn as well, she just has so much sieging potential. So if they get this ball rolling as far as getting rid of all these turrets is concerned, things are going to get really difficult on the side of Avant-Garde because their siege is really, really strong. Of course, if Avant-Garde tries to siege, I mean, there's not all that much wave clear, but Peacemaker might almost be enough. And there's the fact that Vayne, so short range, can't really get in there to do all of that auto attack damage to the turrets. Yeah, got... It's not like a Jinx or anything. They've got no siege at all. Got, yeah. You know, three champions that are melee. 
Vane might as well be just a long range melee. She's very short. <laughs> long range melee. More I, like I, a thresh. And so that was like uh, Superficial's useful, might be useless comment before. But <laughs> <laughs> you can see here now the push coming out from YSSC, and that's the Siege coming into play. There's no way Avant Guard can fight this one. This middle turret is going to go down very quickly. Flying Jew picking up that one here. Now uh, Choo Choo's at the front of the fight. Look at the push, though, that comes out as well. Morgana and uh, Caitlyn, as well as. Uh, ooh, the hook just narrowly missing there. They're going to just continue the push down. They feel comfortable enough to keep going, waiting for the waves to come up. And uh, no, it will not. They'll back out, maybe grab themselves a dragon. Dragon shouldn't be too far away. A minute 30. They're just trying to grab themselves as much uh, control as possible. They've got the top lane. If they grab that bottom lane as well, that first uh, tier turret in the bottom lane, I think that would be YSSC will be in a perfect position. Oh no, looks like Jack's in trouble. There's the ultimate coming out from Zay. Carmen gets the stun. He's flashed, actually leaped over the wall, but over the back there. Yasuo picks up a kill on the Swain. He gets the shutdown, but he gets destroyed as well from Zay coming over the back. And uh, Vayne picking up a kill onto Morgana now as Zay is being focused down. It looks like YSSC could be in trouble as oh, a pair. Coming from the back. Yeah, teleported over the back here, fight, fighting the Jack attack as Zay is getting uh, the silver bolts coming down onto him. A couple more auto attacks will do it as Cardra picks up the kill. Where's Denny? And nowhere to be found. Jack attack trying his best to get away. There's a double kill there for Vayne. In the end, an unofficial triple kill coming through for Cardrid. YSSC horribly out of position for that fight. Really, really unfortunate. And what that was all about was little cutie cheese just getting caught out. He did nothing for that fight whatsoever. They managed to pick up the kill under Choo Choo's, but at that point, things like Vayne Silverbolt, so many sources of really consistent damage coming through on the side of Avant Garde Ascension. And Impaired didn't even need to use his teleport. He just wandered up from the top lane really helped out and made sure that they uh, secured all of those kills. So, unfortunately, I mean, YSSC had this 2,000 gold lead for a second, and they've lost it instantly. Now behind by 600 gold. Sorry, yeah, Seth, if uh, Impaired used his teleport, actually, he just wanted from the bottom lane there, Atlas. It looked uh, like he was um, using his teleport. Just well, because, I you see. Know, he t turned up at the right time, you'd think, yeah, props teleport. Yep, no worries. <clears throat> no, he just walked up. Maybe his teleport for later, so not bad. Not bad at all. He's going to be able to get into this top lane if ever he needs to and apply pressure to the rest of the map as he wants. And it looks like Avant Garde Ascension really wanted to do this 1-3-1 split push, of course. They have multiple amazing split pushing champions, of course. Four of their members are definitely great at that. Trundle, Jax, Yasuo, and Vayne, all fantastic split pushes, and they can do whichever kind of, you know, 2-2-1, two, two, you know, 1-3-1, one, one, any sort of situation that they feel like as far as getting this split push happening because they're going to have a lot of really powerful forces in the later ends of this game. And with a 500 gold lead at 15 and a half minutes, I mean, they're heading in towards this late game at a position that they'd like because they could have even been behind they would have been okay with it. This dragon going to be started up by YSSC and I think they'd be happy with starting a team fight at this point before everyone's really hit their stride on the side of avant-garde ascension so as we can see they are going to be able to pick that one up for free but in an exchange for the mid lane turret of course now we've got temp name coming oh, through it does doesn't go down yeah sliver of health there lantern gets jacks away he doesn't get that last auto attack off so that middle turret's still standing still able to do damage and look at the nice positioning here from ysc now they're going to cut them off there's no way that avant guard can fight this one they're actually going to tank up the turret yes they are and quite easily take down the second tier Turret. They got the dragon, second tier middle lane turret, a nice play here for YSSC, and they're just switching out the aggro as uh, the, the minions do finally come through. Wind wall there, stopping a few auto attacks. They will grab that turret very quickly. Yeah, rotisserie style was absolutely fantastic <laughs> here for YSSC, saving their middle lane turret, picking up a dragon, and getting an inner turret there as well. Not going out of position either. And as soon as Little Cutie Cheese already gets his Phantom Hourglass, he can do, he can do that. How he got caught out there earlier on in the mid lane, it was largely to do with the fact that he doesn't have that item yet. He pops that ravenous flock, gets focused, and then also just pops that, um... Oh, meanwhile, oh. there is a five minutes, take it away! Yeah, you can see Carbon there taking up the turret, the, the uh, hook actually landing onto Flying Jew. Little play there, Cardra in the middle of it. Oh, that, that is a very close binding. Flash over the pillar here from Say. He throws out the ultimate as well. The box coming out from Thresh. Who's going to go down first? Swain picks up the kill on the Thresh, doing a lot of damage here. Nether move, still not quite up. Zay getting out of the fight so close. Renekton's actually going to come around the back, but it's a Vart Guard coming out on top. A double kill here for Choo Choo's. He's taking up the turret. Renekton here trying to do as much damage as possible with Jack Attack. I think it's a little bit too late for that. As you can see, Caitlyn picks up the kill onto, uh, onto Yasuo. So in the end, it is a three for three trade, actually. And I thought of Vanguard to come out on top, but they didn't, Atlas.
Yeah, really unfortunate card would actually aggroing the Wraiths finished him off after accidentally tanking the turret for too long. And of course Choo Choo is unfortunately not remembering the fact that Windwall doesn't block turret shots. So when he went under there to try and take down Denian, unfortunately took a few too many of those and uh, Denian managed to finish off, finish off that one. So a few mistakes positionally by both teams of course. Zahi really tries to tried to force that fight with the Cyclone. Didn't manage to get the knock up onto Kadra though which is exactly what he wanted. Wants to try and get that that vein locked down so they can get enough damage but little cutie cheese then followed up really nicely with his teammate but Kadra because he was free to auto attack finished him off really early on and then it was just sort of a display of too many dives unfortunate mishaps and uh, avant-garde ascension just leaving a few players to die so interesting fight not necessarily um, I guess going exactly how either team really wanted it yeah, I mean, you always really want to come out on top in those fights. So uh, I think that keeping Avant-Garde off that second tier turret has actually come uh, given YSSC a bit of an advantage there. They've got a bit more map control in those turrets, especially in this bottom lane where they've um, still actually got the first tier turret. You can see Vayne trying her best to fight that one up. The gold lead, though, uh, in YSSC's favor, not by much. And uh, Denny in here just chilling out the bottom lane as Gymnast comes around as well. And it looks like they want a fight to happen. Denny gets condemned away as he uses the 90 caliber net. Gets a little bit more uh, little bit more distance on the two. And you can see here, oh, this could be trouble. Yeah, going for a bit of a bait here. Oh, the dark bite. landing. Yeah, Gemis gets destroyed. Denian picks up that one. Zay using his ultimate there. Denian on a killing spree. Not so great for Avant Guard Ascension. They're able to defend that bottom turret. And now Jack Attack actually being collapsed on Max. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Is the pillar going to go down? No, he's just going to wander out of there. Jack Attack, not too worried. There's the Counter-Strike, but not going to pick up the kill or anything coming through there. There's the Torment and the Decrepify. And Carbon going to be slowed down just enough not to do anything. Never move gets leaped out of the way. The nice disengages on both sides. Kadrid wanting to do a little bit of damage here, but Zahi is there to back up Denian. He's happy just to wander on out, no worries at all. So, a lot of almost fighting going on, Menace, but not quite managing to get anything down. And hanging on a bit of a knife edge at this point, I think there's enough of uh, a confidence lead here on the side of YSSC to keep them in this match, but they really need to make some decisive moves really soon, otherwise things could be a real problem. That being said, Zonya's Hourglass has been now picked up by Little Cutie Cheese, or Temp Name 507, and uh, I was that's going to make things that. really, really huge. Yeah, so the Sonya's Hourglass is a bit of a game changer for them. They've got a lot of damage here on the Swain. He will and survive. the Last Whisper as well. Such a huge power spike for YSSC. Yeah, I'm uh, really worried now for Avant Guard Ascension. I mean, a lot of tankiness. You can see the uh, the there it is. The random was omen we talked about actually being finished on Wukong. So they decided to chuck that one on Wukong, which is a good choice. Renekton and grabbing the Sunfire Cape. A lot of AOE damage from items coming out from. All these guys, as well as Swain, coupled in there with Flying Jew. Actually, I haven't even seen uh, Morgana ulti quite land just yet on anybody. Um, they look to try and uh, grab one of those. The Dark Binding might come out here. You can see the Dark Binding narrowly misses Carbon there. Maybe should have gone for Kadra in that situation. Not too sure. I know that Jax was a little bit further out of position, so a nice little play there. They're pushing down this middle tier turret. Middle turret. Uh, on the inhibitor, I should say. And I think they might be able to quite easily get this one because Trundle's up the top lane. He's only just backing. And look at the damage from Denny. And they call him the turret for a reason because he just stands there and does those auto attacks. But uh, that's, a, you know, that's a power of Caitlyn, being able to sit so far back in Siege. Yeah, and they've baited out the wind wall now as well. So it's not going to be available for the next few seconds. So for this push onto the turret, they're going to have a fair bit of ability. And as we can see, oh, so narrowly missing the death sentence there. Really unfortunate gymnast. Just needs that little couple of extra links in his chain in order to pick that one up. But we do have a, a creep wave coming down. It's quite a long way away. They are going to be able to clear out this ward here and get those traps set up just in case this fight does ever break out. Having those Yordle Stamp mm. Traps in the positions where you want to be fighting around. That being said, I mean, they're on a bit of a timer here. Avangard Ascension have a massive wave in the top lane. We'll see where they can get some damage down. Never move, not finding a target. Ravenous Flock does come down. And Black Shield doing amazing work into keeping this Swain able to do anything that he wants. There is the knock-up as well. Oh, Denian! Oh, no! There it is, the 
shutdown coming through on the side of Choo Choo's and now so much damage coming through from everyone. Choo Choo's now gets ignited, he's gonna fall down, but it's not before Zahi falls as well. There he is popping that Zonya's Hourglass Jack Attack, now trying to do as much damage as possible. Only one going down on the side of Avantgarde. Now the next one, Kardrick falling down. This is another really high priority target. Both the jungler and Denian are down, but they do manage to pick up the turret. That fight was so explosive, but going in the advantage of YSST in the end. I cannot commend how well Zay did in that situation. He got himself a four-man knock-up with that ultimate there, Atlas. If it wasn't for that, I do think that Tavante would I think Danian's typing out. baited now in into chat. Is that is that <laughs> would that be correct? I think so. I he got deleted in seconds. I don't think he it was did. intentional. He just got annihilated. It was definitely not intentional. But if it wasn't for Zay's beautiful reaction with his ultimate and a four-man knock-up, it was just massive, Atlas. I. I Cannot, uh, you know, commend him enough after that. It turned the team fight around. Little cutie Cheezeroni was able to get in there and throw out all the damage. Popped his hourglass. Morgana was there, taking up the turret. I thought Avant Guard had the advantage until about that time when you saw all of it turn around. With Denian out of the fight, they still come out on top under a third tier turret. Atlas, I still, I think that Avant Guard are in a lot of trouble. Yeah, they're in a lot of trouble, of course. Now it's been stretched out to just over a 2,000 gold lead again. Five turrets now to two. YSSC doing a lot of great work, and I think that last team fight had a lot to do with item synergy as well, of course. That Cyclone synergizing fantastically well with the Randy Wins Omen. You get in there with the Nimbus Strike, you pop the Cyclone, knock everyone up, and then slow them as they're falling down. So much utility, of course. Then the Dominus and the Sunfire Cape also being fantastically... Um, powerful together and this inhibitor is getting taken down incredibly low Denian now there's the pillar to try and get him off it and we do have the never move coming through carbon taking a lot of damage he's at the front line he's not going to be able to do anything for his team we do have choo choo's now going straight onto Denian forced to flash out of there the death sentence not quite landing choo choo's now very very low there's the box flying Jew picking up the kill eventually they're going to be able to take down this inhibitor as well one for nothing and an inhibitor YSSC are playing so incredibly well such control in these team fights yeah, that was perfect. You saw Zay actually zoning off three members of Avant Guard Ascension using his ultimate. It didn't really actually land on anybody, but uh, it kept Choo Choo's out of the fight. Did a lot of damage, and in the end, they able to pick up the kill. They're going to grab themselves a dragon. They got themselves an inhibitor as YSSC gaining further a lead here. This match against Avant Guard Ascension. They're going to be looking to maybe push another lane here. They did grab the dragon, maybe grab themselves a Baron a little bit later on, but it's just amazing plays here from YSSC. And a lot of us attributed to, you know, the Randwood's Omen doing work. We talked about those items. It's, oh, yeah, definitely. It's ridiculous. Really, really powerful work. Of course, we do have the, the full shot of items coming through for Choo Choo's. Does have that Infinity Edge and Static Shift for the almost 100% crit rate coming on the side of that Yasuo. He is going to be really, really dangerous, of course. Now, if we have a look over at his crit chance, he is, in fact, sitting on 100%. So has enough runes in order to get there. So he's going to become really, really dangerous. Of course, with 200, 250% crit damage, that's why it is so incredibly powerful having every auto attack come through for a whole lot more. And, of course, the Steel Tempest as well. Temp name or Little Cutie Chi is going to be picking up this blue buff and heading around to do this Baron Dance, which, of course, YSCC have the advantage in because they have taken down mid lane inhibitor. Now, Kaldred trying to push out this wave. Of course, Silver Bolts and Blade of the Rune King doing a lot of damage oh, to Super Creeps. Yeah, Vargar trying to make a desperate play here as Carbon leaps straight onto uh, on a little cutie cheese around. He's still got that Zonya's Hourglass available. Zay throws down the ultimate. Here comes Flying Jew and Jack Attack around the back. This is a bad so fight for Avant Guard. Yeah, there's a lot of AO here. Avant Guard really can't contend with it. Zay picks up the kill on the fight. He's got very low. Gets locked up by his Thresh as well. But there's three kills over there on the side of YSSC. Nice play not working out so well for Avant Guard. And Paired running for his life. Looks like it's going to be a 1v1. But they're just going to continue to push down the mid lane. Actually, they decide to start pinging, moving towards the Baron. Maybe they're going to grab that one super quickly. They move down the top lane, but Avant Guard Ascension. What's going on? Trying to get an assassination thing, onto uh, Sway. This oh, no. is incredible, Menace. As we've got Jack Attack chasing down Impaired. Impaired not long for this world. Does have, of course, that uh, frozen ground in order to try and keep this fight going for a little bit longer. But let's just stop talking about it. Let's talk about that last team fight. That fight was won from this incredible AoE burst coming out from YSSC. Amazing positioning. Denian only managed to get a kill in that fight because he used his ace in the hole. That was a fight going purely YSSC's way without any auto attack damage coming from an AD carry. That is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> the Peacemaker. Oh, rest in peace being made there by Denian. Unfortunately impaired. Going to be sitting into the death chamber. Just types into chat. Rude.
And yes, it was, but that was a brilliant snipe, and that's exactly how this game's been going. Now it's seven and a half, oh, it's six and a half thousand gold lead for YSSC. This has been really, really impressive, and when it's getting to this point where we have almost inherently a lead being built as far as team comp is concerned, just because of power spikes being reached by Avant-Garde Ascension, it's just not enough. As we can see, YSSC are playing this comp so well. Now a thorn mail being picked up from Zahi is so, so tanky. All right, some guys in the chat are saying that Carbon doesn't have a trinket, but I think that's a bug, guys, because uh, he, he does. Yeah, I can see one. I can see one too. So he does have one. That's uh, a buggerino on the client, I assume. So that's uh, he has got himself the sweeping lens. So what a crazy game this has been. What Absolutely insane. So YSSC with the advantage once more. Got themselves a Baron buff. They're going to move down to this bottom lane. You see Temp name 507 wanting to uh, get some aggressiveness to try and catch out the vein. They're going to get the second tier turret. Look at the trundle though. Sneaky, sneaky trundle up in the top lane here. And Pear going to try and trade Tara for Tara. It's going to be a base race. And I don't think the trundle's going to win that one. Yeah, he's really, really trying to force um, YSSC to make a decision to try and come up and defend that top lane. But as we can see, they're just going to force their way through. They've got the Caitlyn range. And look at this inhibitor. It's getting taken down so low. Never move landing on a gymnast. There's the immediate Zonius coming through from Temname. And he's starting to do so much damage. Gymnast, there he is. Temname doing his classic flash forward. Zahi now in a lot of trouble. Does pop that decoy to try and get out of there. No one falling just yet. But we do have the inhibitor now getting focused down. Oh, never move. Auto attacks doing so much damage. And instantly we've got Choo Choo's and Carbon both falling down. The inhibitor going to as well, mid lane inhibitor gonna follow, and this could potentially be the game menace. Why SSC are monstrously plowing through this game? Yes, Wayne, little cutie cheese Aroni playing that bloody perfection, mate. It is amazing plays coming from him. Like you said, the flash forward gets in there. He used the Zonya's hourglass straight away and negated so much CC coming out from a Vant Guard Ascension. And the uh, the two inhibitors traded here. It's not gonna be the game, but you can still see that advantage firmly in YSSC's favor. Yeah, they're going to be able to easily push out this top lane and take as long as they like because these super creeps are going to be piling in thick and fast into Avant-Garde Ascension's base. They are on the ropes right now. Of course, they need to try and do their very best in order to stay in this map. They know that they have a really large scaling team comp, so of course, if they manage to turtle, they will be able to stay in this one, but it's getting so difficult. 9,000 gold is the lead seven turrets to three the map control is entirely in YSSC's favor and as we can see they've got wards everywhere they've got complete dragon control whenever this baron comes up again which it will be in a few minutes of course it hasn't worn off yet so it's still got some time but they'll have the power to pick up that one as well because we've noticed their team fighting has been immaculate this is what we saw when they qualified into autumn it was their team fighting it was their ways of controlling fights around the map and it was only ever dignitas that really managed to catch them out on this one and as you can see impaired now never moved not quite gonna land does have that frozen ground just to get out of that one but things looking very dire here for avant-garde ascension so that Baron buff is in its final ticks. They still have it available. They're going to use it while they can, waiting for this uh, this wave of creeps. I think it might actually die out very, very soon in the middle of the next team fight, possibly. As you can see, Jack's doing a bit of a split pushing here. He doesn't have a teleport available, so it's going to be a 4v5 again from Avant Guard. And they will have to just concede this turret to... Uh, to YSSC as they continue to move down. There's the back from Jax. He returns around the, the uh, ultimate. Wow, that is a huge amount, chunk of damage coming out from Denian. Yeah, they're going to keep moving. Force back, so they're going to be able to get this top turret as well. So this is massive here for YSSC. Three inhibitors now going down. It was absolutely ridiculous of Cardin to be pushing that bottom lane because there was oh, Cardin. Cardin now going completely face first into everyone. Last breath being landed here. Chuchu's trying to get as much damage down, but Denian not going to be falling. He is going to go in for the massive play in the end but he's going to get finished off. Denian, with a sliver of health left, just wanders away, looking at Choo Choo's corpse. And this is going to be the, the Nexus turrets falling down. YSSC with a dominant performance. The Nexus is going to be next. Temp name does have that. Zonya's available. He is going to be able to potentially turn into that golden swain bird. And they are going to finish off this Nexus. GG, well played. YSSC, what a monstrous performance coming out from these guys. <coughs> Amazing plays here coming from YSSC and uh, Vanguard Ascension were not able to uphold against all the damage from SSC. And we said that uh, Randuin's Omen, all that armor stacking, look, two Randuin's in the end here, Atlas. It just really, really shows the uh, physical damage coming out from them wasn't enough. You even see in the Thorn Mail coming from Zay. He just went full ham, Ninja Tabi, Thorn Mail, as well as Randuin's Omen. He was so tanky, able to get in that backline, throw down the Cyclone. 
No one was able to do a thing. And uh, GG well played to YSSC winning that one out. Yeah, absolutely fantastically well played. So we are going to have YSSC taking on Team Immunity in the lower bracket final for a chance to go up against Curse for the top spot. And of course, a massive chunk of our $1,500 prize pool as well here at the Cyber Gamer Pro League. So everyone stick around. Still some fantastic games to come. Don't go anywhere.